Hello everybody. This is my review of the Hello everybody. This is my review of the Cavalier marching trumpet built in Elkhart, Indiana. I am a big fan of regional things and uh, while I am oiling these valves, I'll give some history, at least from what I know about this instrument. This instrument is a marching trumpet, uh, at least from what I, I understand. It is a small bore and it has a lot of resistance. It's a pea shooter. Um, so it is kind of difficult to play. Um, this is a, mostly a novelty horn. This isn't really a playing horn. I would not recommend searching for one of these to buy and play like, oh, I need this, like the Martin Committee. No, you don't. Um, this is, but who am, I, who am I to tell you now? If you really want this horn, you know, go and find it and go have fun with it. Um, I want to show a comparison of this bore versus a bigger bore horn, um, like a, a standard medium bore, uh, because it is really, it's surprising. It may not look that small now, but at least to me, in comparison to a medium-sized horn, it is uh, just astounding. Um, it's very lightweight, and it also, if you notice with this, this particular horn had a um, a lear attachment solder to this, but it must have been on solder in the process. And th this is kind of like a travesty of the water key has been like solder or something like that. They just so much solder. Uh, it looks like they also resoldered a tuning slide or not. The, yeah, yeah, the tuning slide. <laughs> I'm forgetting my things. And if, if you also notice, there is a lot of oxide, iron oxide. This is that orange color. Um, this will wipe off pretty easily, you see, with my finger. Um, it's just something that happens around here in this part of the country since the water is... Ooh, look at my finger now. Uh, since the water is so hard here, there's a lot of metals in the water, so it's uh, it, it kind of leaks in the atmosphere. And actually, my example trumpet, I'll show you. It needs a water key adjustment, but I will, uh, I will show you the comparison. Also, to note... There's no springs on these valves, and that is because this is a bottom valve spring horn. I have a couple of these, and I don't like bottom valve spring horns because I had one particular horn that is going to actually be in the review soon uh, that broke on me when I was practicing. The, uh, the bottom valve spring broke on me. Um, it actually reminds me, back in high school, we were I was in jazz band rehearsal, and one of the freshmen had this silver horn, whatever, like a no-name brand. And I remember one time he took out his valve, uh, like literally just a valve just to put on oil and, you know, um, love blue juice, blue juice is good. People swear by Hetman's and some other valve oils. And I like Hetman's, don't get me wrong, but blue juice is just kind of like the classic for me. Uh, <laughs> enough with that tangent. He took out his valve, Ooh, that feels so much nicer. Very loud springs, but the action on this horn is just like, it's responsive, um, which is something I do admire about this horn. Um, sorry. So this student, he took out his valve and it was split in half. So he took out the valve and it just like kind of fell apart. Like the actual valve itself. I don't know what happened, but he had to play on a school horn. Um, but yeah, that, it was really surprising. This is the mouthpiece that came with the horn. And if you notice, its lacquer has been stripped off either from playing or just from age. Um, the reason why I'm not playing on this mouthpiece today is because lead is used into some of these and it's not good to have a stripped mouthpiece and be playing on that because there's some more nastier things that you don't want to get in your body by accident, just by contact. This is uh, the mouthpiece I'll be playing on. I've played on it a lot, but it's not stripped. It's just kind of tarnished. Um, I don't know. That could be like I have really acidic saliva or something like that. Maybe I'm a lizard. I don't know. The, um, so this is a normal horn. This is kind of what a normal bore horn. This is a Bench 65B. I'll be doing a review on this one soon, but as you can see, it has so much iron oxide stuff built onto it. It needs. I need to wipe it down beforehand. Uh, because I do care about this horn. This is probably one of my favorite commercial horns I've ever played. It also looks like there's a lot of tarnish on here. So that's pretty interesting. 
but the uh, as you can see the water key is kind of faulty but this is not the purpose of the review look at the difference in size this is a medium board this is a standard medium board that we see this is a small board okay this is like really surprising to me okay so I'm, I'm gonna put this back here and we're gonna play through this horn okay uh, I'm just kind of going I'm just gonna go along I don't really have anything planned to play in this horn because I don't think I can play anything on this horn and I haven't prepared anything for you so I'm sorry but <laughs> having a very hard time trying to find the pitch on this horn. Um, part of that could be either air leakage, um, and I can actually test that right now. Yeah, so this horn isn't necessarily vacuum tight. Um, that could be just a misalignment in the valves over the years and, and one hour, just maybe just sitting about. But again, this isn't really a good horn. It has a lot of resistance and it's not something you wanna be playing unless you're like elderly and you need that resistance or that back pressure, um, not resistance. So. so I'm gonna do a terrible attempt of running through the range of the horn and we'll see how far I'm able to get up. Um, don't expect much out of it, but I want this review to be over as quickly as possible because I don't like playing on this horn. So. <laughs> This horn is, it's a 1930s horn. Um, this is probably not one of my wisest purchases. Um, and it, this is something that, again, is novelty. I would recommend this would be a great horn to look if you hung it up on the wall. Um, because it just looks, it's got that old fashioned vibe. And more so what's actually interesting is the, the layout of this horn and how the third slide is actually on the outside, sorry, on the lead pipe side of the horn versus uh, on other horns, it's typically on the other side. I'm looking at my other horns just to make sure that I'm correct. Yes, I am correct. So it's kind of like, it kind of zigzags around. And I don't know ne what necessarily what caused these manufacturers in Elkhart, Indiana to do that, but you know, they did it. So, and as far as I know, this isn't a revolutionary horn in modern trumpet books. So, or old trumpet books, I don't know, built in 1930s, that's older than a lot of us, a lot of the people watching this video right now, and me included. Uh, so, yeah. This was the Cavalier built in Elkhart, marching horn, small bore, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're
worst one you've ever seen in your entire life, don't, you know, people probably put effort into making this. So it's nice to honor that. And that's also one thing that's a good thing about collecting older horns is you are buying somebody's handiwork, somebody's craft work. So this has been the Cavalier. Have a good day.